Tonight, from Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London, England, it's the NFL International Series on EA Sports. see Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Seattle Seahawks and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in this. Chris Boswell. On to get it started now, the kicker, Chris Boswell. And we are underway here in London. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Seattle's first go on offense, forthcoming, and under center, of course, Russell Wilson. Gave the commencement address at the University of Wisconsin a couple of years ago. One of the most popular players ever to pull on the uniform there. The beginning of his career, he was a so-called game manager. Take care of the football, rely on the defense. Now, in this stage of his career, the offense runs through him, and it runs very well. First and ten, it's Wilson. And incomplete to open things up. David Moore, the intended target. And now it's second down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. To throw again, Wilson. Looking for Lockett, and it's intercepted. Joe Hayden, the veteran, with a pick. And they will finally put it into the return, but not until he takes it back all the way inside the 10-yard line. The Steelers set to go on offense, and it is the big man, Big Ben, number seven, Ben Roethlisberger, ready to lead them. We talk about his physical attributes, of course, the Big Ben nickname, his ability to take hits in the pocket, his ability to extend plays and get outside of the pocket. But how about this for efficiency? Top 10 in career NFL passer rating. And he's one of the top five winning his quarterbacks in NFL history. That's pretty darn good. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. First carry of the game for Jalen Samuels. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Second and goal from the one. They'll try to run it. This is Connor. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. James Connor able to take this in for the yard out. And the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. 
That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Footing likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory. Excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. This is D.J. Reed returning. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. First and 10 at their own 23-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field ready for their second drive. They had the interception last time. It led to the opening touchdown. So now 7-0 the score as they start first and 10. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. So able to break through the initial contact and then down right near the 25. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. Here's Carson. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. First and ten. Wilson, he's going to look to run with it. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a gain of 12. First down, Seahawks. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. This is Carson. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield strike. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Wilson, option right. And he's got this down to the 35. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. 
Perfect. I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. Now it's Carson. It was Joe Hayden, the former Pro Bowler, that came up to get him down. Nice satisfying run up first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And down to the 16-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. First and 10 at the 16-yard line. That's the end of the first quarter. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Nothing. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. And the Seahawks are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. This duo locked in 14 yards there and a first down. First and goal at the two-yard line. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll try to run with Carson. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. Second effort there. He was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. Jason Myers now for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was all capped off by the Chris Carson touchdown run. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Take it in at the three. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. take over first and 10 at their own 20. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. They begin on the ground here with Connor. 
And he stopped immediately there. The ball. Jordan Brooks on the tackle. Right Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again, second and ten. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, nearly picked. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense. That that fell harmlessly to the ground. On third down, Roethlisberger. And the Seahawks defense gets to him, and they bring him down. And that was Carlos Dunlap who got in to take him down. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Fourth down, here comes a Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. The Seahawks have David Moore back deep. Oh, it's a wobbler here. Fielded at the 43. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there and handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They run it with Carson. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And incomplete, he tried to leave it underneath, nearly got picked. They may be lucky to have that one back, third down. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. Third down, Wilson on the move to his left. He may try and run for this. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. That was a good effort there trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. If it was sunny, maybe this is a field goal attempt. But with the rain, they're going to go for it on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. And that is going to be incomplete. The Seahawks go for it but can't convert. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. Doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. I'm not sat down with my account. You said I got good news and I got bad news. I said, what's the good news? You said, the good news is you made a lot. I said, what's the bad news? The bad news is you spent more. Set! 
Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. This is Chase Claypool on the receiving end. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. By that yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. Trying to get it to Ebron, and it's intercepted. Picked off by DJ Reed. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. The brand of the passing game for both of these teams is going to be affected as the game goes along. It's not looking like the rain's going to let up anytime soon. So that might mean a few more wobbly passes and wide receiver slips. And this one winds up getting intercepted. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And on the last drive... They were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times at any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, okay, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit in the same spot again. Well, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. From the gun, it's Wilson. That is caught at the seven. And the Seahawks are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. But the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. From the shotgun, Wilson. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Moore. David Moore there to make the grab. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. The extra point now coming from Myers. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown.
And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Steelers take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger, the Steeler offense, back onto the field. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger, able to hit his target, Claypool. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. Fair catch called for. No gimme in these conditions, but he's able to look this one in. The Seahawks take over first down. Tyler Lockett trotting onto the field, getting set for this next drive. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part. But they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers will tell you, offense needs to run through us. But they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. He'll find Metcalf. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Operating from the gun. Wilson. He'll buy some time right. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So on fourth down, here's Jason Myers for the Seahawks field goal. This from 36 yards out. Myers' kick is good. And they will move up by 10 now. 17 to 7. 17. Steelers 7. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that. And we haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a half. 
They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. So not much time to speak of remaining in his first half as the kick's away. This will be fielded inside the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Steelers take over first and 10 at their own 29-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And for this spot, filled with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. It'll be a gain of 15 on the play. Move the chains at the 44-yard line. Just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Final play of the half. It's Roethlisberger looking deep here for Ebron. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a strong first half out of quarterback, Russell Wilson. His guys lead it by 10. We send it back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. All right, coach. Thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. As they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. Taking it about the one. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense from either side these last few drives. It has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. Well, they always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to, and if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver, but it'll be second down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Complete pass leads to second and ten from the 25. Now Roethlisberger to throw. And the Seahawks defense gets to him and they bring him down. Carlos Dunlap in there to get him yet again. That is his third sack tonight. They can't figure him out. So one quick easy analysis about why they struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Now, 
So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. Now Roethlisberger. And the throw there going to be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Jordan Berry now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. on the punt there. And this offense, they're going to have an excellent field position. They take over with a first and ten on the short side of the field. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Hey, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Now Wilson on first down. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. Wilson's pass. A gain of six there on first. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun, Wilson, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 30, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. Okay, partner. No surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 43. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. First and ten, it's Roethlisberger. Completion here to Claypool. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A good pick up there of 20 yards. First, and he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside, then break it inside. Really well run route. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. And down inside the 15 he goes. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. 
This will be caught at about the six. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds, right around the seven. Seven yards, the pick up there. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. It's third down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds. And now fourth down. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Boswell's kick is good. And they're back with it a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. 17. Steelers 10. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made him kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. Successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. Here's Reed returning. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Take over first and 10 yeah, yeah, at their own 25 yard line. Here's Russell Wilson in the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He gives it off to Carson, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Stephon Tewitt, the one that got him down. And they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Throwing on second down, Wilson, and Olsen over the middle. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Give him 14 on that one, and a first down. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And to give this time to the tailback. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. On second and nine, Wilson, this one into the hands of Metcalf. 
And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Brings up another nice pick up through the air. And I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon. But with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Wilson now to throw on third down. And he's got Lockett. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 14 yards through the air. Caught the D off guard on third and one. Could just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. To throw on second and six, Wilson firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 21. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. And a couple of yards as they move it from the 21 to the 19. The tackle by Alex Nysmith. A gain of two brings up second and eight at the 19-yard line. Second and eight coming from the 19. Fourth quarter down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On second down, it's Carson. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Here's Wilson. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. Totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And a short pick up there down to about the nine. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. Maybe flashback to high school or college, <laughs> carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. 
Yeah, he's got it. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. So it's challenge time. The referee's tablet coming out. And the big question, Charles, did that football break the plane to the goal line? They just need any part of the ball to cross the goal line in order for it to count. Remember, it's got to be indisputable, though. Sometimes we think it's going to be there. We can't really find it on the tablet. So we'll see what the final call is going to be. So the challenge comes in inside of two minutes, and it gets overturned. And it changes the whole format of what's about to happen because both sides had thought a certain call had been made. Now they have to flip back and start over. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So the victory here for Seattle, and it was a bit of a strange game. They were held scoreless through the entire second half, but their first half output, that's enough to carry them to victory. And that's an odd game to watch, isn't it? Because when we saw the output in the first half, you think to yourself, okay, they've got something working here. They know what they're doing. They'll continue that along. But instead, it's goose eggs in the second half. Fortunately, enough of a cushion and enough defense to carry them home. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. So long, everybody.